Hello, welcome to the North Shore Sew Along. Thank you for joining me. I'm so excited to get to sew with you. There's so many great options in this pattern. Um, I just wanna start with talking, there's three things I wanna talk about in the video today. One is taking measurements. Um, the other is getting your tension right on your machine, which that would apply to sewing any athletics. Um, it's just a, a very important if you're not used to sewing with very stretchy knit fabric to watch that part of the video, especially if you're a beginner. Um, and then the third thing that I want to talk to you about is just showing you all of the pattern pieces. So it looks like if you look at um, the print chart, it looks like there are so many pieces and it can get confusing, but I think I can really narrow them down to where it feels like, oh, there's there's just a few pieces so that you can quickly know what you need to, to get whenever you get started. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to talk about is measuring. So you have your basics to where you're going to get your full bust. So you're going to go all around, keep making sure it's even and then get the number on your full bust. And it might also be important for you to get your over bust. Um, I would only really make this an important one if you have a significant difference between your over bust and your full bust, meaning um, that you're rather large there. And if it's more than three inches, you might want to consider doing a full bust adjustment. I will link Lisa Thrower. She wrote a wonderful post on how to do a full bust adjustment um, on the North Shore. So if you do have a significant difference, you'll want to follow her instructions. Um, if not, even if you have a, a lower cut size, a mini testers found that there was no need to do um, a smaller bust adjustment. Rather, um, on the deep V front, there are two different cups. So one for a fuller cup and one for a not as full cup. Okay, the next measurement you need is your waist. You'll only need this measurement if you're doing view A so that you can, you can grade in a little bit if you need to right here. And that would be, when I take my waist measurement, I do it at the place that I naturally bend which is also the smallest part in my torso usually. And then the next most important measurement will be your around your bottom, around your hips, which is going to be about seven inches below your natural waist. Um, and that will show you what you're going to use for your bottoms. Okay. One more measurement was added. And this is the one I really, I know that you're here to see that we don't normally have in the green stall patterns, but that is very important in a swimsuit pattern. And that is your trunk. So to measure your trunk, you're going to start on either shoulder, um, whichever one is easiest for you. And I'm wearing a dress, so this might not be as easy <laughs> as it should be. But so you're going to start here. You're going to go all the way under your crotch. Actually, I'm going to start on the back, the back of my shoulder. So it might be easier to pull it up. And so you're going to go under your crotch. You might need a helper for this. <laughs> okay, so you're going to go under your crotch. And then you're going to go back all the way up to that same shoulder and make sure that it's even um, underneath you. And you're going to go all the way up to the shoulder and then you're going to get that measurement. Mine is right at 58 and a half. Once you have that measurement, you're going to compare it to the chart. So I make a size, the, the extra, extra small and the trunk length measurement on mine is 56 and a half inches, but my trunk length is 58 and a half inches, which you know, light bulbs went off for me whenever I saw that because a lot of times when I go to the store to buy a one piece, they are so tight this way. Like I just feel like they are just pushing down on my shoulders. So I never wear them. Um, even though I do feel more covered in them and um, I still never wear them just because I feel so much more happy and not as restricted in a two piece. Um, but once I took that measurement, I realized, oh my goodness, it's my trunk length. Even though I'm only five foot two, um, my trunk length doesn't match that of a standard pattern. So whenever you, you get your difference, mine is two inch difference. Um, you're not going to add two inches all to, to your pattern. You're going to add one inch to your front and then one inch to your back because it's a measurement, you know, coming all the way around. So if yours is three inch difference, you would add an inch and a half. Um, while if you're, you are very short torso, you might end up needing to subtract some. So just whatever your difference is, you're going to divide it by two to take out of the front and out of the back, and then you'll get a good fitting um, one piece. If you're making view B, it's probably not necessary to add unless you want to add to your bottoms and, and get them up higher. You can, you can definitely do that. Um, if you do add height to your bottoms, just make sure that you're remeasuring um, or checking the waistband because it's going to hit you at a different spot than the pattern might intended. Um, the 
and by the waistband, I made the elastic that you're putting in the waistband. You might just want to check it before you sew it in um, to the pattern. Okay, so that is everything um, to do with that. Let's get into talking about the pattern pieces. Okay, let's get started on looking at all of these pattern pieces that we have printed out. Okay, so you don't have to print all of them. You really only need to print out the ones that match what you want to make. Um, but let's narrow it down. So you have um, technically two parts of the swimsuit. You have a top and you have a bottom. Um, on your top, you have two parts. You have your back and your front. So if you think about it that way, that you're picking a, fr a top front, you're picking a top back, and you're picking a bottom, then it narrows it down. Like I only have to really pick three things. So we're going to look at within those three things, what each you can be picking. I'm gonna start with the front. So on the very front of the top, you have your, you have the possibility of basically two different front styles. You have the ability to do a deep V and you have the ability to do a full coverage. Now the full coverage means that it's cut on the fold and that it is, um, there is no plunging neckline right here. You have full coverage of your cleavage right here. Now, I mean, if you're full chested, you might still see a little cleavage sticking out the top, but it has like an actual neckline. That is your full coverage. So on your full coverage pattern piece, you have the ability to do a dart or you can just gather under here to, um, and then you have two pieces. One is for your lining and one is for your main. The reason there's a different piece for your lining is so that you can put cups in and that this part can be hemmed, hemmed back for your cups. Um, so technically you don't even have to have this piece if you don't wanna um, do cups. You can, you can just cut, um, cut two of these, but I really, really recommend doing the lining with the ability to put cups in. Even if you think you will never use the cups, um, still just have that ability so that one day down the future you're like, you know what? I think I found this cup that really works for me and then you can easily just insert it into your swimsuit um, even years from now. Okay, so that is the full coverage and those are pattern pieces um, pattern piece three is what it's labeled, and both of them are labeled three, whether it's the lining or the main. Okay, your other front option is your deep V. And your deep V has in itself the option of a full cup or just a regular deep V. And on me personally, I did not, for the so long, I did not make this um, plunging deep V part. Even though I'm not really that huge, I mean, you see me up top, I'm not that big that I, I would consider myself um, this full cup. This is more about breast tissue. Um, how your breasts, um, breasts are also different in how they are sitting on your body. Um, it's an interesting tissue. You know, if you've nursed children, you're definitely going to have a different shape and um, type of breast than if you're 15. Um, so this is to cover um, the breast tissue on the middle of your cleavage. So even though I'm small, I don't mind this, I can't do this one right here because it cuts right across the middle of my breast tissue. And since I've breastfed babies where it cuts across it, it's there's a lot of extra skin there. Sorry, that's not very, very. But if I had fake boobs and they were all very full without extra skin, I would love this kind of cut because it would show off some of that um, basketballness. Um, but since I don't have that, um, I kind of want to hide that extra skin. You know, I, I want my breasts to look good. So I'm going to use this full cup cut line right here. But, you know, I saw several testers that have had children that look amazing with this cut line right here. So, you know, it, it's going to be, it has a lot to do with the way your breasts are set, which, which of these cut lines that you're going to prefer. I would start with trying this fuller one. I mean, it's having extra coverage is always wonderful. And then once you have it on, you can just kind of fold it back and see, am I gonna like it with extra fabric taken away? Am I gonna like that plunging? You might, you may love it. Um, there, one of the cutest suits I think I saw was somebody who did um, this deep V right here and then did the straps in the middle and it gave a lot more room for those straps to show off. It looked great. Um, anyways, so the same way with the full coverage, you have the lining piece and then you have the one for your mane and you're cutting two. These are just mirror. So it's different than the full coverage where it's cut on the fold. And um, these are just mirror image. And then again, the only difference between the two is your lining has the ability to be hemmed um, on the side so that you can um, do that. 
You also have a strappy piece. I think I've already lost my strappy piece, but um, you have a strap piece you're cutting out. And the strap piece can be put on any of these options. It's just this extra. You can, you can do it at the very end when you're finished with your suit. You can look at it and say, you know what? I think I would like a little strappy piece in the end. So it's not even a decision that you have to make when you're cutting everything out. It's, um, it's just one that you can make even after you have finished your suit and maybe a month from now. You know, So that's always an option just to add. While this is another option that counts for all of the fronts, and it is, um, and it's not functional in that it's not whether you do it or not has nothing to do with whether your breasts are going to be covered. It's an overlay, so it goes over your top, and you can do it whether you do the full coverage or you do the deep V. I did it on both. I liked it on both, um, and it's getting sewn into your side seam right here, and then it's on part of your arm side right here, and then this part wraps over the chest and then ties in the middle. I think it gives a little extra coverage. I really liked it. Um, on the suit I used mine on, I didn't even really need cups because it gave me some extra like um, lift right there. Okay, those are all the front options. See, didn't I narrow that down and make it seem like, oh, it's not that many options on the front. It's not that bad. Okay, the next options. Let's talk about your back. So you have the ability for like a regular bra strap, a U back, you know, a U back where it's going, the straps are going over your shoulders and then you have the ability to do halter to where it's tying at the back of your neck. So just two back options. But within those two, you have lots of options. So on the, on the U back, the one that goes over your shoulders and does not tie at the back of your neck, you can have it pull over. So if you do a pullover, that means it's cut on the fold right here. There is nothing, there's no ties, there's no clips, there's nothing. It's just cut on the fold. And if you do that, that's piece five. It's going to look kind of, I mean, you don't have a regular, it's not a regular bra in that you don't have like um, the ability to adjust it right here, but it has the straps that just go over your shoulders to connect to your top. Um, and it's, this one is cut on the fold. You cut one of your main, one of your lining. Okay. On that U back and that same measure, you have the exact same piece, but on this one, you can tie it or you can put a swim hook. So if you want to do the ties, you're going to cut out pattern piece 10 to do the tie on your back. Or if you want to do the swim hook, you're going to get one inch swim hook from Joanne or wherever you order the supplies. Okay, that covers all of the U back. Now on the halter back where it ties at the back of your neck, you still have the piece where, it, even though it's tying at the back of your neck, um, you still have your piece in the middle of your back. And in the middle of your back, you can have it pull over where it's just cut on the fold and there's a piece that just goes straight across your back. This would connect in your side seam. This would be where it cuts on the fold and then it's mirrored over here and then it connects to the other side seam. Or you could also tie in the middle of your back or do a swim hook in the middle of your back with the halter ties. So you have these two pieces. Piece 10 is if you want to tie in the middle of your back. And so whichever back option you cut out, whether it's a U-back or it's a halter tie, you'll need to cut out that pattern piece that's for the tie back. This is only if you've done the halter ties. And this is the tie where you'll tie at your neck. Okay, those are all the back options. There's really not that many once you narrow it down, but in all the top options that you cut out, no matter what you have decided, you will need piece 14. And that is your bottom band that goes under your bust. And you are going to have two different cut lines. So I just fold my back if I need this cut line. And then I have it straight if I need this cut line. So you're going to cut here if you are using a swim hook. That is the only time you cut where it's full length. If you're using um, the ties or a pullover or any of that, then you're going to cut with this folded back. Okay. That is all of your top options, all covered. So now let's talk about our bottom options. I'll start with view A. So let me move these out of the way. There's all of our top and hopefully you have made a decision. And now we're gonna decide on our bottom. So on your bottom, you have a front. I'm gonna start with view A. This is the one piece. So this is where it attaches to the top. So you can pick any top you want, except, I have an exception to that. If you're doing view A and you have it to where your back piece comes all the way up to your back, it needs to connect into your back so you're not gonna be able to do um, one with like a swim hook or ties because you need something to connect that back into. But if you do the lower back piece on view A, then you can pick whatever back. It has no dipshit. No, no, it doesn't matter anything. Except I will tell you this. 
I made a pullover back with my, my view aid and it was quite an exercise getting into it with it cut on the fold. I wished I would have just done a hook or a tie in the middle of my back to easily get my one piece on. Now I know better for next time and I can tell you all about it. So on view A, you're gonna pick on your front, there's only two options. You have a high leg cut line and you have a low leg cut line. I did the lower leg cut line, but the high leg cut line will give you lots more skin and hip showing. And on view B, you have the different back choices and then you're gonna pick the same leg option you picked on the front. I mean, I guess you could pick different if you wanted more coverage in the back, but you want it higher in the front, you could do that. Um, and you can also see where I added length for my torso. Remember how I talked about how you're gonna add an inch? Well, I put a piece of paper underneath. First, I cut it apart and then I put a piece of paper underneath and made sure there was an extra inch added um, right here and then I just smoothed out that line to connect it and I did the same thing on my front and my back you can see where I added in extra paper between my inch that I cut out if you were um, subtracting length whenever you cut your paper apart where it says length and shorten then you would overlap it by whatever amount of length you need to reduce it by okay that's a view a bottoms you can and if you're doing view a then you do not need um, a waistband but any, um, the only one that you need a bottom waistband on will be on pattern pieces 16 and 17. So pattern pieces 16 and 17, this is your regular bikini bottoms. These have only one leg cut option and three rises. You have a low rise, a mid rise, and a high rise. And then in addition to that, you have your, this band and this one. And whenever you're cutting out your waistband, just make sure you've selected the same rise that you've selected on these. So you can just fold the pattern piece down. If you wanna do a low rise, fold it down if you wanna do a mid rise, and then make sure you match it the, to the front which, in the back, whichever one you've chosen. Okay, so you do not need this waistband on the second bottom option for VB, because you're, using three it's inch elastic. It doesn't have a casing like that. So on the scoop bottoms, you just have these two pieces and that's it. And there's two ways to construct those. So I'm gonna have two different videos. One, if you want them lined and not reversible. And then your second video is if you want them completely reversible. I'll show you how to use two swim fabrics and you can have a pair of bottoms that goes with two different tops if you want, or you can change it. Okay, those are all your pattern pieces. Now I'm gonna grab your the elastic oh it's upside down the elastic cut chart so this is a really interesting chart in that it has a lot of information in it and if you're not sure what you're looking for it can be very confusing so the first option it says is one piece and on the one piece it is talking about view a so if you're doing the view a bottoms you have low leg which would be the leg that you selected. So there's the low leg and there's the high leg. And on the, the low leg, you're gonna cut two three eighths inch elastic. It's anywhere from 17 to 25 and a quarter inches. Or if you select the high leg, you're also gonna be cutting two that are three eighths. It's just gonna need to be a little bit of longer of elastic. So you have your measurement there. Um, you also on view A need elastic that goes in either the cutouts, if you do the high back, it's gonna call it cutout elastic, or if you do it to where there's a scoop in the back and it doesn't connect to the top, you're gonna to use the scoop back option. So that is all of what that section is, the one piece section. Okay, the next section is bikini bottoms, and that is referring to um, pieces 17 and, it's not that one, it's 17 and 18, wherever it went. Nope, not 18, it's night. Now I'm confusing myself. Oh, it's 16, 16 and 17. So if you are doing just the regular bikini bottoms, that is what the second section is talking about. And there is um, a waist measurement for that you're gonna cut out for your waist elastic for if you're doing a low waist, see the low rise, the mid waist is calling it the mid rise, and then the high waist is talking about high rise. And those are all for your waistband. So you're cutting, you're using one inch elastic on those. 
Then on the bikini bottoms, you also have your low leg. So there's only one leg option. So there's only one um, line for the leg elastic. On the next section, it's labeled scoop bikini bottoms. That is referring to pieces 18 and 19. So if you use pieces 18 and 19, the, there's a leg elastic you cut two of, starts at 16 and three quarters, and then there's a waist elastic, and it's also three eighths inch elastic, and you're just cutting one of those because you only need it to go around your waist. Okay, so we've covered the first three sections. Now um, the next section says back slash arm side. Pick one back option, and this has to do with um, your, the back of your swimsuit or your arm size. So like if you're doing a pullover you back, um, you have, you're gonna select that one. So we'll talk about that one in each video when you need to look at that chart. Then the next one is the neckline. So it's gonna say pick one front option for your neckline. So if you're doing any of the deep V, so you're gonna need to cut two of them. And the reason you're gonna need to cut two for the deep V is because you're, um, you're doing each breast, um, the elastic around it. While if you're doing a full coverage, you're only cutting one because it's just an actual neckline that you're doing it to. Okay, and the last one, the last piece of elastic is the front for your under bust. You're gonna cut one inch elastic and it starts at 22 inches and that is the elastic that goes in your band on your top. Okay, that is everything. Now we're gonna get through talking about our serger tensions and, and threading your serger if you have a serger and getting it ready. This is the part of the video where we are going to talk about serger tension. Um, I've gotten messages several times over the past few years. So people just asking me or telling me, I do not sew my own leggings because I have popped stitches. And um, I tell them, um, yeah, I've had that same problem too. When I first started sewing leggings, I will never forget my seams coming un unraveled. And there's two culprits. One is if for some reason my needles aren't threaded correctly. Um, if I missed one step in the process, then um, it's not right. Or if my needle tension is a little too high, um, that can pop um, one of your threads. But I'm also just going to show you how sewing on just without stretch thread in your loopers, how it really affects it. So if your fabric can stretch, this is just a, um, a very stable French terry. So it doesn't have a ton of stretch. So I am going to just do a regular, I have, I have a regular thread in my machine. And you can see um, that I have really nice, even flat seam. Um, this thread is right at the top. Everything looks wonderful. I can stretch it and always, always practice on a scrap of what you're about to make. I can stretch it and nothing pops. I mean, that is a wonderful seam and it would be a wonderful seam um, in whatever garment that I'm constructing. And it's normal that you're gonna have a little bit, if you really pull it apart this way, you're gonna be able to see the threads. That's normal and that's why you try and make sure that you match your thread to your fabric. Okay, I'm gonna do the same seam with just regular thread on, this is swim fabric and see how good and stretchy that swim fabric is. Um, let me see, I just abused that one. So I'll get one I haven't abused yet. Um, I'm gonna use pink and put two layers through. And look, if you just look at it, everything looks just as good as it did on the French Terry. Um, but look at what happens. You hear that? It's breaking. I can sit there and pull my fabric. My fabric is stretching more than my seam. So what does that mean if I did a really good, nice squat in the gym? What does that mean for the seam? It means it's gonna, <laughs> it's good. I'm gonna say, I'm never sewing athletics again. And see, look what happened here. And that's, everything was the same. I mean, I couldn't even replicate this on any of my cotton lycra fabric or anything else, but on swim or athletic, I can definitely, and you wanna do that. So you wanna look at how you've set everything and you want to really abuse it. You wanna stretch that fabric as far as it will go and see if you can do that. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna change my thread. I'm gonna change my looper thread to be a maxi lock stretch thread and I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, I have my thread switched out to where on my two needles, it's just regular maxi lock 
um, thread, not stretch thread, the plain thread, because you're not going to be able to put the stretch thread through um, your needle. And then on the loopers, on my two loopers, I changed that to the stretch thread. It's a it's a nylon based. Um, and then I have everything set to four. I say as your baseline before you start adjusting anything, have it to four. And my stitch length is at two and a half. And then um, my differential is set between neutral and 1.5. So it, I would call it about 0.75. Okay, so I have, this is the fabric that I just abused and was able to rip that seam and I'm going to sew on it with just making that change and I'm going to show you what the seam looks like. Okay so first off you're going to notice that now my tension is not balanced. Do you see how this this thread they're they're meeting closer to the front. So the next change that I'm going to make is that I'm going to change this dial up to, I start at three and a half, but I know I usually have to go closer to three. So I don't even start abusing it until I see that everything is balanced. So now see it's balanced. And now that it's balanced, I'm also going to do another thing is I'm going to lower my left needle just a little bit and a little goes a long way but if something's gonna pop it's usually your left needle thread and if you can lower the tension on the left needle thread even just a little bit it'll help another thing you can do is increase your stitch length so mine is set at two and a half so I'm gonna change the dial over here I'm gonna put it down to two um, so I'm gonna change that and then we're gonna give our seam that exact same tug Okay, same pretty seam. And it's all, and it's softer. You can see the nylon is a softer fabric on you. And now we're gonna stretch. And you're gonna tug it, and you're gonna see that that seam can tug just as much as your fabric can. And if, and if you can break it yourself, then if, you better believe me, if you do a power squat, that you can break it then too. Nothing's broken. Look how it held up so nicely. And all I had to do was, and I adjusted this this looper just because um, I've just noticed that. That's how I get mine balanced on my machine. Yours might be different. So you're gonna sit there and play with it to make sure that your yours are balanced. And then I adjust my left needle because I just know that's usually the culprit um, that's gonna pop on mine. Um, and you're and you're, you're going to keep going lower and keep checking it and keep abusing it and see at what length yours is the best. And you know, I was talking to Angelin, who is the owner in Green Style, about this video before I started filming and saying, "What do you do to prevent pop seams?" And I told her, you know, what I do. And she said that one of her tips is that she actually will pull on her fabric a little bit um, when she's going through the inseam, so that her machine takes extra stitches through the inseam and it does make it a little bit wavy, um, but that's okay. She says once it washes it and once it's on the body that it's fine and she never pops those seams. So that is another trick if you have a certain area that you know um, is gonna get more stress in your garment. So we have some great looking stitches and that's important when you're sewing something that is gonna be stretched when it's across your body. If you're sewing on your regular sewing machine, you're gonna look through your manual, pull out your manual, and you wanna find um, a good stretch stitch for your machine. Um, a lot of the elastic on the North Shore though, you're not gonna to need to use anything but a zigzag. And I will show you throughout the instructions my favorite, which is usually between two and a half and three, and that'll keep where your elastic is, that, that will keep that seam strong, okay? I'm excited to get started. Thank you for watching.